pointless. Sharon Hornellstrom here with day 913 of What You Up To Now. Documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. And I've been, I've made an absolute, I guess I do both things online and offline. So I've just made a transition to adding online elements to, to what it is that I do in, in, in life and the world. And with COVID-19, guess what? Everybody and I've said it for several years now, everybody needs some kind of an online presence and an online component and a way to automate and serve their customers remotely, digitally, um, through the internet, as well as their offline business. And no time and nothing could have proven that more than the, the situation that we're all in right now with COVID-19. Now, pointless. What the heck does pointless have to do with anything? And why am I saying pointless? And I'm thinking pointless activities, right? Today's idiom for supersize your business was carry coals to Newcastle. And I'll admit it, I had no idea what this idiom meant and where it came from. It's, it's one of those that's centuries old. It's from the United Kingdom and I have never heard it. In my circle of influence and in my experience, which is kind of fast because I'm old, uh, I'd never heard it, never heard this expression. Now, I totally understand what it means once I read the definition and, and, and looked it up online. I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally get this. I understand the meaning of it. It means a pointless activity, doing something that's totally unnecessary. And who among us hasn't felt like we've done that? Now, sometimes we learn that later on, something that we thought was pointless at the time was preparing us for a later experience. If we ever practice or master or learn how to do something really, really well, sometimes the practice and the, the tedium of, of learning how to do it and learning the foundational steps of how to do something feels painful. You know, you think back, I think back to math, right, in school. We've all went to, gone to school, we've done math, and we think, oh my God, this is pointless. And I will admit, there's a lot of math. I'm an engineer, so I did a lot of math that I've never ever used again, especially with technology and computers and, and formulas. I mean, I remember memorizing statistical formulas that I've, I've never used once I did that test in my classes to, to graduate because the computers do it. We, we put in the numbers and the data points and then the computers put in the functions and the formulas. So we never really need to know those formulas, the things that we get tested on. To me, that I look back on that and it seems pointless, but actually understanding the foundations was building, it was, it was making it possible for me to build on that knowledge and those skills and, and put together ideas and understandings that I wouldn't have if I hadn't done those, those core basic activities. So sometimes things like practice feel pointless but practice makes it possible for us to perform under any circumstance, especially when the pressure is turned up, right? Especially when the stress or the circumstance becomes more urgent. We know that during that time, we'll be able to perform just as well as during a calm time because we prepared for that, we've practiced. So sometimes things feel pointless, but they're really not. Other times, stuff's just freaking pointless. I remember when I left corporate America, in corporate America, we did a lot of stuff that was, was really pointless or that we didn't understand. One of the best gifts you can give the people that you interact with and work with is explain to them why they're doing things and how they fit into the big picture, why what they do is important. So often, people in an organization feel like what they do, they're just doing and going through the motions because they don't understand how important it really is. The janitor's job in your organization, especially now with COVID-19, the people that do the sanitation and the cleanup and make sure everything's the way it should be and makes everybody's life easier, they are probably one of the most important functions in your organization. Yet often they go unseen and unappreciated because they do their job in off hours or at night when everybody else isn't there. And you know, I, think, I used to think, I ran the sanitation department in my last corporate job. I inherited sanitation and sometimes it was definitely an underappreciated um, division of the, of the company unless something was missed or not done to someone else's satisfaction. You know, sometimes I felt like they thought little fairies came in at night and cleaned up their offices or cleaned up their departments or cleaned up the, the whole um, work areas. And it, it, it was kind of mind boggling because there was very little appreciation for it and they weren't fairies, right? So a lot of times, all we need to do is pay attention and, and actually acknowledge things that are done for us 
that, that we, we really should appreciate because we don't have to do it ourselves, right? I love somebody comes and mows the lawn. I love when somebody cleans the bathroom or, or does the dishes or does the laundry and takes care of those things that have to get done, but I don't have to be the person that does it. And I appreciate it every single time I see and notice that it's been done. And if we do that and we acknowledge the people that do those things for us, number one, it's the right thing to do and it's, it's just plain human decency and kindness. And we're not entitled to have those things done for us. We're lucky if we can have those things done for us. And if we remember that and appreciate it, I think it just makes us not feel like we're doing pointless things. And there's nothing, there's nothing that needs to get done or that gets done in this world that is pointless. Each and every one of us are here for a reason and to contribute something special. And maybe somebody's somebody's reason for being is to make other people's lives easier or to make other people's lives function and work. <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna know what it feels like to be pointless or not appreciated, be a stay-at-home mom for a while. Uh, I was laid off from one of my or I guess I got fired from one of my jobs and uh, I was a stay-at-home mom for a few months and talk about feeling unappreciated and um, and invisible that was was not a great experience for me now not not all moms experience that but definitely all of the things that moms do often get overlooked and unseen until of course you don't do them have you ever been a mom that could be sick moms I don't know about in your family but in my family it was not possible for mom to ever be sick and be down I mean no matter what, there was always something that had to get done. So if you're dragging yourself out of the bathroom to get the kids a popsicle, because they're probably sick too, it just had to get done. That's why I, I think it's, it's fascinating when men will tell us and people will tell us, multitasking is impossible, you have to focus. I get you have to focus when you, and do a concentrated effort when you want to accomplish something specific. But if women couldn't multitask, I guarantee the species would have already ceased to exist. So. Guys, next time you're saying women can't or people can't multitask, it's impossible. It, well, it's impossible for you, but it's not impossible for all of us. And my other pet peeve is if you're a man, don't ever compare anything you're doing, building a business, anything. Don't ever compare it to childbirth and having a baby. Don't do it. It's just, it's inappropriate. Women, go ahead and do it. You can do it all day long if you've had a baby. If you haven't had a baby, don't do it either. If you're, you know, a single, uh, a single person that's 24 years old and you've never had a baby, don't don't talk to other people about having a baby and, and what it's like to build your business because you don't know. I, I it's one of my pet peeves is people teaching and sharing things as if they're an expert that they have never had any experience with, even vicariously through their significant other. It's like, you know, there's so many other things you have to offer. Offer what you're a specialist at, not what you've never experienced. Pep P from one of my favorite gurus used that in a at a, a live event once and, and I love the person, I love the man, but I was like, there is no way on earth you should be comparing this to having a baby because you personally have never had a baby. I mean, yeah, you've been a father, but you haven't been, you haven't, gone through the massive transformation that happens when you're pregnant, have a baby, and then, yeah, just no. <laughs> no. Again, my opinion. So, pointless, pointless activity. Uh, I guess some people might say my videos are pointless. Some days I feel like they're pointless, but I try to get to a point at some point during the videos. A fun challenge today was all about when you're sad. What's the best thing to do when you're sad? And the book that we're doing, the 365 Day Challenge on, it's a little journal book called Do One Fun Thing Every Day. And it's usually to get my voice warmed up in the morning, <clears throat> which sometimes it still doesn't stay warmed up throughout all my content creation. But today was about, well, what do you do when you're sad? And I, I, it, it suggested that when you're sad, learn something. And I say, hey, when you're sad, ask questions and be curious about something. So that was really a, a kind of a fun one, maybe because I agree with it. And I think that, you know, we want to find ways if we're feeling sad or gloomy or depressed or any negative feeling or negative emotion, 
we want to do whatever we can as quickly as we can to try to feel better. And the quick, quickest, fastest way to do that is by asking questions. And it's by asking a better question, not asking, why am I so sad and gloomy today? Why does this always happen to me? Those are not good, better feeling questions. You know, well, I'm feeling sad right now. I get this. Uh, what can I do to make myself feel better is a much better question than why am I so sad? Why does this always happen to me? It's what can I do to feel better? Because we always want to be reaching for better feeling emotions. Because the better we feel, the better we show up, the more energy we have, the more good things we attract into our lives. Uh, Supersize Your Business with Carrie Coles, Newcastle. And the Get Up and Go Challenge, uh, preliminary day 10 today, because Saturday, August 1st, we are starting a 30 day Get Up and Go Challenge. 30 days to guarantee that you are better off by August 31st than you are right now in some area or in all the areas and aspects of your life that you so choose. Uh, so we'll do a 30 day challenge. Yep, starting on a Saturday, 11 a.m. on the Get Up and Go Challenge page. Today was all about giving, the importance of giving to get what you want. In order to get whatever you want, you have to be willing to give, give value. Life and the world, as we know it right now, is an exchange of value. Everything we get is a result of what we give, what we what we put out into the world. So if you're not getting what you want right now, what do we do? We ask ourselves a better question. We say, all right, I am not getting what I want and what I think I deserve in this world right now. Why is that? And if you realize you're not giving anything, if you're not producing anything of value or paying attention to or giving your time and energy to anything and putting value out into the world, then you're not going to get anything in return. If you have lost your job due to COVID or you're laid off or something and you're not doing anything, you're on the couch or just hanging out at the house doing nothing, waiting for the world to turn back to normal and your job to hire you back, well, you're probably getting unemployment in the United States and probably a nice fat unemployment check. but. Depending on what you were doing before, that may or may not be enough to sustain your life. I know whenever I lost my job for whatever reason, unemployment wasn't even an option because it was such a small amount compared to what I was used to making, it didn't feel like it would even cover the groceries, much less anything else for the family. So um, it wasn't an option. I had to find something to do immediately again to give value because us being employed by someone is giving value, right? We're giving our time, our energy, our resources, our, our mental or physical abilities in exchange for the money that we're paid to do that job or that service. So those are the things I am thinking about and working on today, working on the Get Up and Go Challenge coming up on Saturday. I, I guess I better, since it's only a couple of days away, get her mapped out, at least an outline and a guideline of what I'd like to cover this time through. I don't know why, but I've been putting off and haven't done that yet. It's been, my son had surgery and my, my granddaughter has started just a couple hours a day of kindergarten readiness, which is so fun. She came running, coming out of the school yesterday looking like a little rock star. It was hilarious. She had little heart-shaped sunglasses on, her hair up in this curly bun, and it was like, oh my God, it was just funny. She's definitely loving the school experience so far, and I'm just, I'm just hoping that we can continue to ingrain in her the love of learning. Because if you love to learn, nothing in the world can stop you. You will figure out anything and everything and anything is possible for you. Guess what? Anything is possible for all of us. But if you love learning, you know that. If you don't love learning and you don't believe it, then that's what happens to you as well. All right, that's it. That's enough rambling. Go out, make it an incredible day. If I can help you in any way, ask in the comments below or direct message me. And like I said, I keep keep pulling myself back a little on this now. And I'm like, I better stop saying that at the end of my videos because I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to run out of time and energy and the ability to answer everybody's questions if I keep putting that out there. But for right now, I'm still putting it out there, especially during COVID-19. Uh, our lives are all blown up in the air. And sometimes we just need to ask, sorry about the alarm, ask somebody, what, what the heck do I do in this situation? Or where do I turn? And I need a resource that I don't have. If I don't know the answer, I will be the first one to tell you, but I will also help you to get in the right direction. I will not leave you hanging. Lots of times we just feel like we're hanging and we're out there all alone, but none of us are alone. All right, have an amazing day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow and let you know what the heck am I up to tomorrow. Take care. Bye.